Well, hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Michael O'Loughlin. Today we're going to find out, does ivermectin work for COVID-19? Let's dive right in. So ivermectin does work against viruses in the lab. So what are the mechanisms for ivermectin in COVID-19? Well, it damages the virus copy machine called an RNA polymerase. It attaches to the virus copy or automatic sheet feeder called helicase. And the virus uses this to make faster, better copies. Now, it also slows down your power plants, the mitochondria, protecting them from virus hijacking. And it may decrease the entry of the virus by changing your ACE2 receptors. So let's talk about that virus copy machine. Well, when the SARS-CoV-2 virus gets inside your cell, it's going to want to make more viruses. And so it's going to try and find ribosomes. Now, remember, a ribosome is a protein factory inside your cell fluid, the cytoplasm. So once inside the cell, a virus terrorist immediately hijacks your ribosomes and forces them to produce special virus proteins. The proteins will then be sliced up and used to build something deadly. Now, some of the sliced up proteins are going to use viral tools and other are going to be viral building blocks, building materials. Then the virus is going to take the tools and the building materials and build a virus copy machine. Now, the copier is called an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, or RDRP for short. And it's a deadly copy machine, and it's going to make a lot more viruses. The virus at this point has one little problem. The copy machine can only print a negative called a complement of whatever goes in. Now, the virus needs positive copies, just like itself. How's it going to get those? Well, it discovers it can take a negative copy that just came out and feed it right back in, and out comes a positive copy. So how does ivermectin stop this? Actually, ivermectin attaches to the copy machine and breaks it, keeping it from working. It may damage the input tray or the output tray or some other part of the machine. We're not certain about that. Is this as effective as remdesivir or favipiravir? It's hard to say. At this point, all we know is that it does attach to the copier, which can break it. So let's move on to the automatic sheep feeder. That's helicase. And that's a virus protein that works with the virus copier, and it speeds up copying. Now, ivermectin can attach to that and break that as well, and that will reduce copier output. Now, the other mechanism, the other way that this ivermectin works is it slows down the power plants. Your power plants are called mitochondria, and they're essential for virus copying. The virus wants to ramp up the activity of the power plants to increase its own virus numbers. Ivermectin is actually going to come in and reduce. It's going to dial down the power output, which is going to frustrate the viruses. So let's move on to some special terms. One is in vitro. That means in glass, and that refers to inanimate things like test tube and petri dish tests. And in vivo means within the living. And that's when we're looking at various biological systems in living organisms or cells, usually in animals, which could be humans and plants. Let's move on to what's in favor of using ivermectin in COVID-19. Well, there have been a number of investigations. Now, ivermectin inhibits the copying of SARS-CoV-2 in monkey kidney cells. And in vivo, it has activity against West Nile virus and Newcastle disease virus. There's a threefold higher level uh, of this drug in your lung tissue than in the bloodstream after taking just a single dose. And doses have been taken which are almost 10 times normal doses without serious side effects on healthy individuals. So against the use in COVID-19, well, in vitro studies were successful against Zika virus but in vivo it failed. And the in vivo activity against West Nile virus and Newcastle virus were at very high levels, and at that level, it's actually toxic to the developing cells, the live cells. It inhibits the copying of SARS-CoV-2 in monkey 
kidney cell cultures, but it required very high doses, at least 35 times the peak concentration achieved in the bloodstream after an average adult dose of 15 milligrams. And even at a 120 milligram dose, which has been used in humans but is not approved by the FDA, the concentration in your blood would still be only a tenth what is needed to kill the virus. And at higher doses in unhealthy people, the drug may accumulate and cause neurotoxicity, although there are few reported cases of this. So how is ivermectin metabolized? Well, it doesn't usually get into the brain. A single dose takes a long time to be metabolized, though, and leave your body. So high doses can theoretically get into your brain, but in a clinical trial with high doses in healthy people, there were no complications. Still, animals have died from accidental overdose. Now, there's a mutation which can increase the central nervous system concentration and can be lethal, so it could get into the brain. And this can be seen in certain dog breeds. Dogs of the herding or collie family have a defect in the gene, MDR1, resulting in increased risk and possible death. So what are some of the everyday uses of ivermectin? Well, it's used topically for lice. It's used for scabies. It's been used for bed bugs. It's used for river blindness. It's used for pinworms, threadworms, and dog heartworms. So how does it work against worms? Well, ivermectin acts on a chloride channel which is specific to worms. So the worms have this chloride channel, and it opens it, and it locks it open. And this is particularly important in the nerves because it means the nerves can't conduct, which means the worms can't survive. So they get, mo they get paralysis. And the interesting thing is that mammals do not have the same chloride channels. We have different ones. Now here's some interesting facts. It comes from a soil microorganism called Streptomyces. Now, it's mainly used to control parasites in livestock, maintain animal health. Cost for a dose to treat a typical horse in the US? Less than $5. Used for dogs to prevent heartworm. And used in liver blindness as a first line drug. Now the interesting thing about that is it has to be given every six months for 10 to 15 years or as long as the person has evidence of skin or eye infection. And it's now thought to have anti-cancer as well as antiviral properties. Now, ivermectin for animal use is available without prescription, but the FDA recommends that non-human grade ivermectin be avoided for use in humans. It recommends the drug be taken only by prescription after consulting a healthcare provider. Now, ivermectin is currently being investigated in 48 clinical trials across the world. This, these places include uh, India and Egypt, Argentina, Italy, and the U.S., just to name a few. At this point, we need more information, and this research should clarify things. And that's brought us to the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, please share and subscribe, and we will see you next time. I'm Dr. Michael O'Loughlin.